Hello everyone, today let's talk about finding the unit tangent, principal unit normal, and then the unit binomial vector for this given helix here. You can see that for the x and the y components, we have the cosine function, the sine function, and then the z component, we have the 3t. So this would be a helix. And so how do we start this problem? Okay, so first, uh, to find the unit tangent is actually quite easy. Uh, we can find a tangent vector and then we divide by its own magnitude so that it will be the unit vector. Okay, so first we take the derivative for this function. So we get the r prime of t is equal to, okay, so we get, uh, take the derivative, we get like the two sine of t and then two cosine of t and then take the derivative of 3t so we just get the 3. So that's the r prime that is also um, if we think of this as the motion of an object in uh, along the helix then we can also consider this as the velocity function for this object. Okay so now what's next? Uh, we are going to find its magnitude. So we are going to find the magnitude of R prime, and then that is really just to square each of those components. And then we are going to get a the two sine of t, and then square plus two cosine of t, and then quantity square, and then square this three. Okay, so now simplifying this, then we are going to get what? Well, actually let's uh, let's do the calculation over here. So we are going to get what? What is this one? This one will give us four, uh, four times sine square of t, and this one will give us four cosine square of t. And actually, if we combine those two together, because we're adding, so we're if we're adding those two together, then we are going to get just the four. Because we factor the four, we get sine squared plus cosine squared, we just get one, and then times the four, so we get the four. And this is actually what? This one is actually just nine. So if we add the four and the nine together, we are going to get 13. So we have square root 13. Okay, so we have the magnitude for this r prime. Okay, and then now we can find the unit tangent. So the unit tangent is r prime of t over its own magnitude. Okay, and then we are going to get what? We have the, um, the vector over here. So lay the two sine of t and then two cosine of t, and then three. And then in the denominator, we are going to have the square root of 13. And actually we can distribute this one over square root of 13 because we can actually just write it like this. It's one over square root of 13, and then we still have that same vector. Okay, so if we distribute this one over square root of 13 into each component, then we are gonna get like the two over square root of 13, and then sine of t, and then do the rest. So that is one answer that we have, that is the unit tangent. Uh, if we want a specific value for um, for the lowercase t here, we can actually say, let's say we want to find capital T of uh, one, for example, then we plug the one into the t here. Okay, so that is our unit tangent function. And then the next one is that we want to find the principal unit normal. So now for the principal unit normal, let's just recall over here. We want to find this capital N of T, which is the derivative of the unit tangent and then divided by its own magnitude. So that it will become a unit vector. Okay, so now um, the calculation is actually still not too bad because of the sine and cosine in the components. Okay, so we are going to take the derivative. So if we take the derivative of capital T, so we get capital T prime, and then we are going to get what? We take the derivative of the sine function, so we get the cosine. The constant in the front doesn't change, right? So we still just keep that. And then this one, take the derivative of the cosine, so we get the sine. Constant stays the same. And then this one becomes zero 
because it's a constant. There is no lowercase t involved in here, so we just get zero for this capital T prime for the z component. Okay, so uh, we also want to find the magnitude, and then we can have the n. Okay, so finding the magnitude will also be really quick, so let's just quickly do that. And then so score each component. So we have, so that's scoring all the components, adding them together, and then inside the square root. So now we have this. And then here we can do the simplifying just like before. So we do the scoring. We're gonna get uh, the, the negative sign will disappear. So we are gonna get four over 13. Okay. And then cosine square. And then what about this one? This one is going to be 4 over 13, and then sine square. You can see that they both have the same coefficient in the front, so we factor that out. We are still just having, just like before, we have cosine square plus sine square, which will give us the 1. So together, adding them together, we will just get 4 over, well, there is no square root, so just 4 over 13. Okay, and then we don't need to worry about the zero here. So uh, the magnitude would be the square root of four over 13. And if we simplify this, then we have the square root of four, which will give us a two. The square root of 13, we can just write it, just leave it as square root of 13. So now we are actually ready to put the vector and then this magnitude together so that we can have the n. So n of t is equal to, well, let's just put that down again. So we have, um, we have this in the denominator, okay? When we put it in the denominator, we can actually just change it to its reciprocal and then change the operation into multiplication. So actually we just need to uh, just, just write this one as what we can flip this. So if we are flipping it, then what happens? Then we get square root of 13 over two because it's in the denominator. So now if you just put it over here, then you can see that we're taking the reciprocal. And then now we have the vector, the t prime. So we have negative two over radical 13, cosine t, negative two over radical 13, and then sine t. And then we get the zero. And so you can see that if you distribute those in there, then you can see that this will cancel with this and turn that into a one, and that's also into a one. But of course, we still got to keep the negative signs, right? So the final answer for the n would just be um, negative cosine t, and then negative sine t, and then zero. In fact, there is one thing to just point out here. You can see that the n is actually pointing in the same direction as the t prime, okay? Um, it's because when we divide by its own magnitude, we are not changing the direction. This vector will still be pointing in the same direction because magnitude is a positive quantity here. So now what really happens, okay, is that because they point in the same direction and we know that n is a unit vector, so if we look at this vector right here, we can simply just, without doing all this calculation, we know that those constants must be turned into one so that we can get a unit vector. Okay, so that is really just a uh, trick just to speed up the calculation without having to do all this. Okay, so this one is the n. And then there was one more that we need to do, which is the, uh, the unit by normal vector. So that is the b. And then for the b, the b is actually quite easy. Let's just recall how to compute the b. For the b over here, b of t is equal to t of lowercase t cross n of lowercase t. Okay, so we are taking the cross product of the unit tangent and then the principal unit normal. And then now let's do the cross product. So we have the b of t is equal to now taking the cross product, then we are going to write that as the three by three determinant. So we're gonna get i, j, and then k for the first row for the three by three determinant. What about the second row? The second row will be the t. So we are going to just write down this, just copy this over here. Okay, so we are going to get negative two over radical 13. Actually, I need more space, so. And then we have sine, 
right? And then the other one it will be 2 over radical 13. And then cosine. And then the last one is going to be 3 over radical 13. And then what about the last row? The last row is the end, so we can just copy this. So we get negative cosine t, and then negative sine t, and then we get the zero. Okay, so now we can do the cross product. So for the cross product, then first, for the first component, we cross out the row containing the i, cross out the column containing the i, then we are going to have this two by two determinant and then that will be our first component over here. So for the two by two determinant, then we take this, multiply by this, we get zero and then we subtract this. And just keep that in mind that because we're subtracting, then we are having negative sign here and then multiply those two together. When we multiply those two together, we still have a negative sign here, so we have negative, 3 over radical 13 and then sine of t. So it's really easy to make mistakes because of all the signs and all the subtractions that we have. Okay, now what about the next one? The next one is to cross out the row containing the j and then the column containing the j and then don't forget that there was still an extra negative sign here and then that this times zero, we are going to get zero, okay? And then subtract this one. Okay, so subtract and then multiply those two together. And then so we get three over radical 13 and then cosine of t. And then so many negative signs. I think I'm missing the negative sign over here, right? So we have another negative sign. Yeah, so too many negative signs here. So that's really confusing. So first by uh, there is a negative sign for the middle component for the three by three determinant. And then now, this negative sign is coming when coming from where? When we take this, multiply by zero, and then we get zero, and then subtract the product of those two. And then so that is the subtraction. And then what about this negative sign? This negative sign is really just coming from the negative one in front of the cosine t. Okay, so that is where that negative sign is. So we have three negative signs over here. And then lastly, what about the uh, the last one? The last one doesn't have a zero anymore, but the calculation is not too bad. So we have uh, negative times negative is positive, and then we have sine times sine, right? We get sine square. So we get two over radical 13 and then sine square, okay? And then minus, sub subtract, and then this is coming from computing the two by two determinant. And then there is another negative sign here. So we get negative and then two over radical 13. And then cosine square. Okay, so this is the B, but we still should just try to simplify it, right? So if we simplify, then we get three over radical 13 and then sine of T. So this one is easy. There are three negative signs right here, so we still have a negative sign, so we get three over, uh, negative three over square root of 13, and then cosine of t. What about this last one? This last one, let's see. So those two negative signs will change into the positive, okay? And then you can see that it becomes what? Two over radical 13, and then sine square of t, and then, well, plus, and then this. Oh, it just happens that they have the same coefficient. So if we add the sine square and the cosine square together, then we are still going to get what? Just one. So we are going to get what? Two over square root of 13. And so that is our Z component, two over square root of 13. And that is the B. So we did all this calculation to find the T and B. Okay, so I hope you like this video. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.